it's that time of year, New Year's resolutions. I think we all know that person who's like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make my New Year's resolution to do this. You know, I'm gonna really try to improve my life in this particular way. They say that every year. It almost never plays out. And hey, you got to give them credit for trying, right? I think we've all been guilty of doing that at some point. You start off with good intentions, and then after a little while, it starts to go downhill. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm calling and channeling all of you fragrance beginners who are wanting to kind of use the new year to get your foot in the door and get off to a great start when it comes to building up your collection. And because this is something I've talked about a ton of times, I've mentioned it a lot in passing in videos, with each year that goes by, in a way, it almost gets harder and harder to start out when you're diving into this hobby because with each passing year, so many more fragrances are released, so many more new hype beasts are born, and it's hard to keep up, and you don't know where to start. There's information overload, a whole bunch of stuff to process, and it's one of those things where when it gets so intimidating to try to start out, you put it off more and more, and so if you're wanting to start building up a great collection when the new year hits, these are some great options, and also, to be fair, even if you're not a beginner necessarily, you have a nice little collection built up, but you want to continue to improve it and add new things to keep it fresh, these are also great options. So you don't have to be brand new. You could have a collection established already and still find value within this video. All of these are great scents here. And so there's going to be a theme, and that's going to be that they're just overall very likable. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call a lot of these generic. Uh, to be fair, I think a lot of these offer quite a bit of value, um, but there's also a balancing act as well. So these aren't niche and super challenging, but they also aren't like super, super cookie cutter and predictable either. Also, price point, I'm trying to keep it modest, but there are a few options for those who do have a taller budget and want to spend a bit more. So no matter what situation you're in, you're going to find something that you'll like in this video. I want to point you to my mailing list and texting list real quick before we get started. That's going to be a great resource for those of you who might be new. You're looking for great deals, sales, and maybe some rare fragrances that you hear people talk about all the time. And I'll link all of these down below as well. Let's get things kicked off with Bulgari Man Glacial Essence. This one's got juniper berries, clear wood, musk, and cedar wood in here. So, you know, kind of sticking with that theme that I was talking about a minute ago. It's just going to be clean, wearable, and very, very easygoing and very impressionable. This is the type of thing where when you show up to work or school or whatever event that you're attending, people are just going to kind of look at you and go, you know what, you smell great. You smell refreshing. You smell clean. You smell refined and well put together. And that's one of the best compliments you can get. And so this is something that just isn't going to really... Uh, push the boundaries and that's kind of what we're going after for the theme of this video But at the same time this doesn't really smell like anything else necessarily it kind of smells like a, just a general um, theme or category of scents rather than smelling like anything in particular so you know for example this is not a Sauvage clone or an Aventus clone or anything like that it's kind of doing its own thing but it still is familiar if that makes sense and scents like that often work very well because people like familiarity, okay? I tried to get that word out the best I could. It was a little bit rough, but people like things that are similar. And so when you can make connections and smell something and it kind of reminds you of something else, that's usually a good start. This next one is a new release as of this year, and it's a niche product, more of a luxury item. It's a bit more expensive, kind of going back to what I was saying in the beginning. If you have a bit more budget to play around with and you want something more premium and it's the holiday season and you want to treat yourself, this would be a really good one to get if you're starting out, you know, and, and starting out, especially with niche, can be very difficult because you can get yourself into a very deep, dark, and disgusting smelling hole if you're not careful. So this is Parfums de Marly Altair, or Altair, and like I said, this is their newest offering. This is one that gets better each time I smell it. You know, I kind of uh, have been taking little breaks in between wearing this one. I haven't been trying to wear it every single day. You know, I've wanted to kind of ease into it slowly, have some spacing in between, you know, each time I smell it, and it's one of those things where every time I do revisit it, I just end up liking it a lot more. Um, really, when I first tried it, it was almost a little bit underwhelming. Uh, however, now it's grown on me a lot. And 
I think this could easily be a big hit from the brand. A lot of what they release ends up being really popular, but I think this one especially can go very far. It seems to already be off to a good start. Has cinnamon, vanilla, and praline. Oh man, you know, it's another sweet scent. I know uh, people are not going to be overly excited about it. Some aren't. Uh, but for me, I think it's fantastic. Nice gourmand twist, heavy on the vanilla, kind of gets compared to Mercedes-Benz Club Black, and that holds some merit. You know, the type of vanilla being used in here, very creamy and syrupy and, and realistic. Um, that definitely crosses over. Uh, but beyond that, it does its own thing here. The praline, the cinnamon, it's giving it a warm spice and kind of a chocolatey, gourmandy undertone to really make it stand out. Got to give credit where credit's due. Uh, they've done it again. They created something that the general public are going to love the smell of. And like I said, pricing here is going to be up there a little bit more. You're going to be up a little bit over $200 right now on discounters. I'll link it down below with a BOGO code as well. That way you can buy one and get another one 25% off. You can mix and match that. And uh, it's a great deal. Definitely check this one out if you just want to spend a bit more money and get yourself something more premium. This next one is Prada Loam Intense. This one has leather, iris, some tonka bean. And so, you know, the original Prada Loam would be a great start to your collection as well. Or if you're someone who has an existing collection built up, it would be a great one to add if you hadn't added it yet. However, I like to predict that most of you have probably already uh, welcomed Prada Loam into your collection if you do have one. And if you don't have a collection, it was probably one that you're considering picking up. Um, let me do you one further and recommend Prada Loam Intense instead. So kind of appeasing to the best of both worlds. People who already have a collection built up, you might not have the Intense yet. And if you're starting out from scratch, go straight for the Intense. I don't want to say that this makes the original completely obsolete, the EDT, because it probably doesn't. But for me, I wear this one considerably more often than I do the original. And I also prefer Prada Loam Intense to the original in terms of scent, performance, all of that stuff. So that's my preference. Everybody's gonna be different. I find this one to be a bit more exciting. And that's primarily because the leather in here just gives it more of a masculine, uh, kind of stronger base. Does have better performance. A little hint of a sweetness with this one, but you still get the soapy clean iris. It's just a great combination. That one right now is about 128, uh, maybe 132, $33, somewhere around in there. Um, so, you know, a little bit more pricey, but it's worth its weight in gold. Next up, we have Stronger With You Only by Emporio Armani. So what I like about this one compared to Intensely, Absolutely, and even the original and the exclusive editions is it's going to be considerably more fresh. So at one point, there was Stronger With You Freeze, and from time to time, you can still get that one, uh, but they did discontinue it. It was just one of those short-lived little situations there. Stronger With You Only kind of seems to be the replacement of Freeze. This one is not as fresh as Freeze, but it's considerably more fresh than the others. So you do get the vanilla, the chestnut, but then some lavender in here, and even a little bit of grapefruit off the top. It's just gonna be a little bit lighter, uh, more easygoing, and, and not as overwhelming. Especially for a beginner, you know, the Stronger With Yous are beginner friendly, to be fair. You could probably go straight into Intensely or Absolutely or whatever and really like it. But Only is a lot more affordable than those others. It's easier to get and it's probably just a safer choice if you were to really kind of weigh them out. Next up, we have Hugo Boss, The Scent, Le Parfum. So this line is expanding. They released a new one. I think it was this year, um, didn't they? Or was that last year? I can't remember. It's kind of all starting to uh, meld together. But they've been adding to this line pretty consistently. I think the latest was Boss the Scent Magnetic. And I think that was earlier on in the year, kind of in the springtime, I do believe. Now, this one, I think, was last year's release. It's got Maninka, Iris, Woody Notes, and Leather. So, you know, Iris is a trend, just like Ambroxan has been and many others. And so they had to get in on it as well. One thing that they do really have on lock is the Maninka fruit. Uh, other fragrances have used that note, but Boss the Scent, this line in particular, has really honed in on it and kind of made it their, their character. And it smells great. It's very distinct. It's super unique. As you get further into the line, uh, the likelihood of you smelling this on other people gets lesser and lesser just because they're newer flankers and they're not really 
uh, viewed in as big of a light as other popular brands and lines. You know, your Sauvages, Dylan Blues, Invictus, One Millions, and things like that. So this one's a little bit more low-key. If you want something a bit exciting and different to start your collection off with, or a nice new addition to your collection that you already have going, check this one out. We also have another new release up next, and this is gonna be one that is super easy to hate. It's gonna be a punching bag in the community. I think it already has been, but you know what that means. They, they uh, released this, which honestly, they started off as an Eau de Parfum. Gotta give them credit there. They didn't give us just an EDT or something to start off with. So, you know, it's a brand new line from a designer brand that is known for doing flankers extensively. So this is gonna be around for a while. There's probably gonna be a flanker release in this coming 2024 calendar year here, and so on and so on. Probably a Parfum, an Elixir, and things like that, and an O Fresh. But it's YSL, myself, and like I said, start off with an EDP. So it's got Bergamot, Ambro Fix, which is like an Ambroxany note, Orange Blossom, and then a little bit of Patchouli to finish it off. I believe that's all they give you. Is this one unique? Uh, no. I don't think anybody is saying that it's unique because it's not. Is it super pleasant, uplifting, slightly sweet with that aromatic freshness? Yes, it is. And does it smell really good? I kind of think it does. It's one where it's going to be met with resistance. People are going to want to hate it because they look at the notes and they see what they're doing and they just they, they want to dislike it. And, you know, when I was looking at this one as well, I wasn't, I'm not going to say that I was sitting there ready to bash on it and immediately convince myself that I wasn't going to like it, but I was kind of hoping for something more on paper. I think this one does smell better than what it might look like. So you see the notes, you see the name, you see the marketing, you just think it's going to be completely and utterly disappointing, but it's not. It's, it's nice. It just smells pleasant. You know, it's expensive right now when it hits discounters for a better price overall that will help things out a little bit. Again, from a, a you know beginnings standpoint for your collection or just something super versatile, there's not going to be a single person in the real world, uh, in the public, who dislikes how this smells. So just keep that in mind. Kind of similar with this next one, it's Aqua de Joe EDP. It's an aromatic take on Aqua de Joe. So some of the other flankers have aromatics as well. Kind of the way I've described this one is it reminds me in a roundabout way a little bit of Aqua de Joe Ascenza, which um, right when I was getting into the community and getting into collecting and uh, what was that? Would have been beginning of 2017. Ascenza was getting a little bit of traction. Nothing crazy, nothing like what Profumo would go on to do and has done and like Profondo also um, years later. Um, but you know, Ascenza, people were talking about it. It was becoming popular and I got myself a bottle. I loved it. Not long after that, discontinued and it is now incredibly hard to find. Years later, they released an EDP, Aqua de Joe EDP, that you can get on discounters easily. And this would probably be the closest thing you can get to Ascenza. Ascenza was just an aromatic forward version of Aqua de Joe and that's kind of what this is as well. You get some of the mineral notes in there consistent to something like Profondo, um, but it's kind of a mixture between, I don't know, the original and Ascenza is kind of how I look at it. It's super inoffensive. You cannot mess this stuff up. Wear it for anything. Smells amazing. Next up, we have Dunhill. Um, ooh, blanking on this one. Gotta pull up my cheat sheet. Dunhill Amalfi Citrus. It has lemon, neroli, tea, and orange. Stuff smells great in the signature Dunhill Icon Series bottle. So very heavy glass. You can see they've got a bunch of glass just down there taking up space, you know, for no reason other than aesthetics and it looks great heavy cap as well um, the dunhill icons are around 40 dollars. this one's a bit more i think like 60 maybe 65 pushing 70 somewhere around in there but still for the price point killer presentation great quality scent very fresh great for springtime the neroli in here smells great it kind of gives it a green earthy earthy smell which is something that makes it stand out compared to a lot of other fresher scents in general Again, if you want something super easy to pull off and beginner friendly, this is a great place to go. Just gonna be super easy going and refreshing. Sticking with that trend, we have Michael Kors Extreme Sky. So this is part of their Extreme line. There is a couple more, Extreme Rush, Extreme Speed. 
and maybe that's it. There might just be three total, something like that. I don't have the speed one. I have this and extreme rush, I believe is what it is. Uh, this one's my favorite of those two, um, extreme sky. So it's got cypress, ozonic notes, juniper. It is airy and effervescent, kind of ozonic and light. It's citrusy, aromatic, um, something that's super pleasant and really a great place to start out. We're going to finish this one off with Jean-Paul Gaultier Scandal Le Parfum. It's got tonka beans, sandalwood, and geranium. It's all they really give you. Fair enough. That's kind of the new trend. Three notes and call it good. In terms of my thoughts on the scent, it's not one of my favorites. Uh, same with the original Scandal. It's not something I get super excited about. Um, out of this whole list here, this would probably be my least favorite. Okay. That being said, from a beginner standpoint, from just adding something super mass pleasing to your collection standpoint, uh, you can't mess this stuff up. And so just because I don't like the smell of it doesn't mean that it's bad or that you shouldn't buy it. Um, it really doesn't matter if I like how this smells or not, because this essentially, I don't know, it it does what they're trying to do, you know, which is to just have something that smells good to people. Um, beginners especially, mass pleasing, uh, something where it stands out in a retail environment. People go up and smell it and are hooked on it just because it smells super nice to them and cool presentation and all of that stuff, right? And so marketing, it, it just works. So I can recommend it to beginners because it does what it's supposed to do very well. It's just something where I don't personally get a whole lot of enjoyment out of it. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. All right, that's going to do it for me. If you're wanting to start things off on the right foot in this coming new year, um, you can't go wrong with any of these. That new PDM, great. Prodolome Intense, amazing. There's a lot of good stuff in here that I will have linked down below. Don't forget to jump on my mailing list, texting list as well. Great resource. Uh, rare, discontinued, hard to find stuff coming in stock all the time. Big sales and deals and all of that. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.